Hello and welcome to the Geeks Review. I'm Royce. And I'm Joshua. Today, Josh will be reviewing Narcos, the Netflix cartel series, as well as a docudrama series, Age of Samurai Battle for Japan. Take it away, Josh. So I have recently been trolling on Netflix to fill that WandaVision hole in my heart <laughs> that is now gone. And I have recently discovered the, yeah, the, I'll, I'll say hit series, Narcos and Narcos Mexico. Four, uh, five seasons total, and truly a star-studded cast for the most part. The one catch is, I hope you love listening with subtitles on because <laughs> there is very few English speakers in this series. Yeah. So we'll start off with Narcos 1, uh, the original series... 2015 to 2017, this follows special agents Shinsu Pena and Murphy of the DEA taking on the drug lord Pablo Escobar. So, true story. True story. This is dramatic reenactments with certain events, people, and scenes being fictionalized in order to not get sued yes <laughs> in other words yes but this is not a show for the faint of heart this is a downright gritty gory and bloody show mm. it, it, it earns its ma rating in spades <laughs> the two of us we're too young to know about escobar and his yeah. well the impact he had on the world and the um and this is really the first two seasons of the first the original Narcos is about Escobar mm. and how he was able to pretty much be public enemy number one internationally, mm. but only the US would really kind of. Eh. But what has he done to us recently about it while well, Colombia is literally at war with itself? Mm. Seeing how the Colombians sort of. how far they're willing to go to take on Escobar. Yeah, it's a dramatic reenactment, but damn. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, is all I can say. I remember one of the um, military police that they had, literally they are military police, they are national police. Um, uh, I can't remember his last name, but he was a coronel. And he was the one guy that could scare Esco Escobar because he was willing to sink lower than what most people think that police would be capable of. Like, mm. he gathered a bunch of men that had recently lost family to Escobar and he kidnapped Escobar's brother and had those men then beat his brother to death. Gosh. When he was brought back from Spain, they kind of just put him in exile for a little bit. It's like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> You're too extreme for us. Go away. <laughs> and then when he was requested by the DEA to come back, first thing he did was he went on patrol. He found an es a mural to Escobar and then pissed on it. <laughs> right. Then rounded up a bunch of kids that he knew were Escobar enforcers, not enforcers, sorry, informants. Mm. And this is where it's going to get a little dark here, people. Oh, like it's not been dark already. <laughs> um, no, he kills one of the kids. Oh. And then gives a bullet to the other, to one of the surviving kids, no younger than eight, and says, take this bullet to Escobar and tell him that I'm coming for him. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's the type of thing that we're dealing with here. But truly wonderful performances from actors all around. Pedro Pascal as special agent Javier Pena, the sort of the dirty cop mm. of the two. Special agent Murphy, played by Boyd Holbrook, who we all... Seems familiar to some people because he's been in The Predator. And as Pierce in Logan, mm. and of the Reavers. Yeah. Wagner Mora as Escobar, and quite frankly, he he steals it for me, just mm. as going through the different stages of Escobar's life and just sort of how they age him a little bit with makeup here and there. Granted, I had to... I like doing things while I watch shows, you know, either do schoolwork or um, play a bit of a game, but I found myself having to turn a lot more because of the lack of... English speakers yes. in the show. <laughs> That's not to say that it's a detriment to the show. I think if it wasn't spoken in Spanish, it would be rather dull. 
Yeah, I think having that yeah. authenticity sort mm. of adds that flavor to it and, you know, keeps you engaged. So I've watched documentaries before um, with dramatic reenactments, my favorites being Rise of the Ottomans, The Roman Empire, which has three seasons, both still on Netflix. They occasionally, every so often, stop the show dead in its track and have a historian talk about what's happening. Mm. Here, they actually use TV broadcasts from that era mm. of those things or even photos of the actual people in lieu of certain scenes. Like, in the beginning, the first episode has us seeing Escobar being arrested for smuggling. He's bringing mm. in contraband into Colombia, and that's... When I say contraband, you probably think, oh, you know, drugs, weapons, and all that. It's TVs. Oh, right. And electrical equipment. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets arrested, and he gets a mugshot. So, while they're using Wagner as a, um... as the actor, they actually show us the actual mugshot of Pablo Escobar. Yeah, oh, right. And when they finally catch Escobar at the end, towards the end of season two, spoilers, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they actually show footage of from the Colombian TV stations that rushed camera crews down to record it. Mm. Well, that's interesting. And this happens it? throughout all the shows. Did you find it um, like jarring at first, or like did you get it's... used to it, or was it natural? It felt a bit natural. It does seem a bit jarring, but when you you get used to it after a while and it adds more to the show, like, it reaffirms, this happened, people. Mm. Escobar sent someone onto a plane, no older than you or me, Royce, mm. and we're below 30, yep. um, onto a plane with a briefcase bomb to kill the Colombian president. God. Yeah. Jeez. That's the level that they went to. It just... The details they go to for this, and I just... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I found myself a little bit too engrossed for the first two seasons. And then I found myself drifting once Escobar had been dealt with, and they moved on t to continue Javier Pena's story and his dealings and takedown of the Cali cartel. So is he a real character? Is he like a real person? Yes. Or is he like a everyone, composite? Every one of these people that are in the show apparently were real. They have just omitted certain details in order to protect them. Right, okay. So, um, oh yeah, it seems he is real. Yes. And he was played by Pedro Pascal, wasn't Yes, he, he was. Right, so is he in the third series? Then? He, is, he is in the third season of Narcos. He is not in Narcos Mexico. Right. Well, yeah, the because... the two kind of cross because dealings with certain things. Well, how about the Mexico series? Because yes. I was kind of wondering, like, I mean, obviously, you think Pablo Escobar, Pablo Escobar. Es Escobar. Escobar. It's going to be, um, it's going to be factual, you know, to a degree. Yes. So then going into later seasons, I was kind of thinking, okay, are they doing their own thing or is this based upon something else? I mean, it's... you've already tackled the big bad. What's next? Um, well, the next the group that fills the void, the Cali Cartel. Hmm. Mexico is more of a prequel. All right. Because it deals with um, Enrique Kiki uh, Camarera, another agent of the DEA who sent into Mexico, and he kind of goes above and beyond the call of duty at the time because the... So, with the DEA representation in both series, in the, in the first Narco series, they have a lot of their disposal. They're treated as, you know... Extensions of the American law, not just some nuisance there. Mm. While in Mexico, they have nothing. Right. The most information they get is by buying drinks for the federales and state police. Right. So it's literally drinks are on Uncle Sam. Tell us what you know, mate. <laughs> and Kiki goes above and beyond, eventually becoming a fawn in the side of Miguel Garado's cartel federation where he grabbed a bunch of smaller families and tried to form this one big major cartel that would have controlled most of Mexico and the Mexican Golden Triangle, which encompassed Tijuana, Sonora, Juarez, and Guatemala. All right. Guadalajara, sorry. Guatemala's a country. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Guadalajara, played by Diego Luna. Kiki Camarena, played by Michael Pena. Just steal the show 
in this. It's just a shame that Pena playing Kiki Camarena doesn't stay for too long. Doesn't even make a full season. Oh, where he a shame. is. Spoilers or <laughs> uh, suffers the same fate as the actual Kiki Camarero. Yeah, where Michael Payne well, is alive and good. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, they say there's no spoilers in history. Yeah, um, he is beaten, tortured, and then killed by the Cartel Federation, and then left on the side of the road for that? someone to find. That's what's up. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, how like Jesus. compare this? I guess you haven't seen Breaking Bad. No. Have you seen um, Sicario? No, but that's on my list. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of wonder because that was that was a series of films which was... Um, well, Sicario is Spanish for Hitman anyway. Yeah, I mean, it is more modern day. It's sort of dealing with that. And it did cop a lot of flack because, like, you know, Mexican officials saying it's not as bad as that anymore. You know, I mean... It's pretty bad. Bodies hanging under the highway is pretty bad. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. The series, surprisingly, only take place, each one of them, 30 years ago. Yeah. To 40 years ago. Oh, God, I mean, that's only like nine, 1980, 1990. That's... 1970. Well, I like mean, that's... The earliest. You're getting 50, man, if you're going... Yeah, I mean, That's a long time ago now. <laughs> it's still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, that's how far we're going back. The Reagan presidency. Oh, wow. Oh, oh that and explains then the, everything. <laughs> then the first Bush presidency, and then when you get to season three of... Narcos, not Narcos, Mexico, sadly that's only got two seasons, you're dealing with the Clinton era. All right. Wow. Yeah, that that is quite recent. Mm. This is still... We could easily go to our parents and grandparents and they would easily partially remember some of the stuff. Yeah, well, I remember um, Escobar's fate was broadcast and, you know, there is footage. So is that both a combination then of real... Yes. With actor. So it's real, and then they show the footage of the actual camera crews had recorded. The shows are great, but the main thing that really helps it along is the narration, and they usually come from either the main agent, or in the case of uh, Narcos Mexico, uh, the one who does the most damage. So with Narcos, for the first two seasons, we have Steve Murphy, played by... Boyd Holbrook, he does the narration for the first two seasons, and then when season three rolls over, it's Pedro Pascal as Javier Pena. All right. And But with Narcos Mexico, it's being narrated by, and I did look this up, Scoot McNary. Yes, good actor him. Scoot McNary as Walt Bresden. Yes, Holt and Catch Fire and uh, Batman v Superman, Frank... The Mandarin MCU one shot, where he played a uh, an operative of the real Mandarin. Yep. Basically, he's he's an actor who's like in everything, and I didn't recognize him for a while, and then when I did, it wasn't. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! <laughs> yes. Um, Interested to see it because of him, to be honest. He narrates both seasons of Narcos Mexico. Oh yeah. Despite only popping up late in season one, and then all for season two. All oh, right. Okay. Cool. And the one takeaway from with the original Narcos is, yes, they won. They beat Escobar and they arrested the Cali Godfathers. Hmm. However, with Mar- Narcos Mexico, no one wins. They, they managed to get Miguel Guerrero. However, the cartel still form. Well, yeah, it is the prequel. It's the taste yeah. of things to come. And then you can go watch Narcos again. Yes. Yeah, Have a happy true, ending. The, the, a happy the, the, ending. <laughs> the, the happier ending. Um, the two do cross over. And what made um, Guadalajara so infamous was he had one of his sidekicks, let's just call him that, uh, Rafa. He managed to create, cultivate his own strain of marijuana where it was seedless. Right. And that's where most of that money came from because you, you can make more money without having to deal with the seeds and f- flowers. So, yeah, I do apologize for the... Um, it's all good, man. Uh, for the um, for the, a bit more man. adult episode of the Keeks Review. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, that's, yeah. that's what I am apologising for. But it is. Oh, just wait till Mortal Kombat comes out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on that for you. Uh, but but we, I make light of it. But this is a surprisingly good show, mm. and 
it does make me feel, yes, I should go and see Breaking Bad. Yeah, well, it came out a few years after Breaking Bad and was really kind of filling that hole before Better Call Saul came along. Yeah, but... It'll be I... interesting to see that, to see the real side of it, hey, mm. and compare. I guess, you know, there's actually some things, you know, they say truth is stranger than fiction, and you'd kind of watch Narcos and go like, well, Gus Fring didn't do much in the end, did he? No. <laughs> he wasn't as crazy as you thought he'd be. He's not as crazy as Escobar, who got into bed with paramilitary communists, helped stage a coup, yeah, a temporary coup of um, Colombia. I remember it was it um, crazy. the Netflix series Dark Tourist by David Farrier, New Zealand documentarian and reporter went to um went to colombia and actually explored you know like the dark tourism side of that country and how you know the scars escobar left are still there and you know like the compound which he was um imprisoned in you know house arrest he built himself which was part of his surrender deal yeah i'll just go build myself a nice prison with a Um, nice big theater room a theater room soccer field it was called Club La Cafienda, Cafidel. Here's a joke for the YouTube version. It's called Taking the... Oh, boy! Ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember he was even then meeting with like former... Um, they were like police officers who were on the take from yes. Escobar. And it was just because it was the safest thing to do, basically. Pretty much. It would be easier for him to brand things that aren't his. Mm. Yeah. At that point, he controlled Colombia quite well. Yes. And he actually wanted to be a statesman, but... Not quite. No, he threw a little tantrum when they said, get out, you're a criminal. (laughs) Uh, But yes, that's Narcos. It's on Netflix, is it not? Netflix, yes. Both seasons. uh, Sorry, all three seasons of Narcos and all two seasons of Narcos Mexico. Awesome. What else you got for us today? I have have gotten halfway through. I'm going to double check this now. We're on, a, we're on a documentary history trip, kiddies. Strap your bags and bring your vomit bags. <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to... Uh, I, I laugh. I laugh at this. Um, Battle for Japan, Age of the Samurai. Follows the... For the first, it is in vain like the Roman Empire's Rise of Empires, the Ottomans and... I can't even remember what the other one was. There's <laughs> another one in there. I just can't remember. Probably it. Vikings or something. You know, oh, God, no. Nah. No. The usual standard. Um, <laughs> the old favourite. Yeah. Um, it's a dramatic retelling of the rise of modern Japan and seeing the events that set that into motion. Like, unlike Narcos, it is interrupted by... So it's more a documentary. Yeah. It is more a documentary. It's more like it, what you would see on the History Channel without it being past 11 p.m. at night and having <laughs> them going on about aliens. Um, <laughs> oh, that's every time of day now. But. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, how much of a, like, reenactment? Is it more dramatic or is it more like, you know, this is just your standard documentary fare with dramatic reenactments? Or is it more like, you know, a combination of drama with the documentary? If that makes it's sense. It's more <laughs> documentary-like. Right. So, take it away. Yes. So, it follows all the different clients. The Oda, the, the, the Kashi. I'm going to butcher all of these. So, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> and just sort of goes into the different events that sort of helped guide Japan to where it is now. Sort of. It follow, It's about the, um, the Civil War period mm. of Japan. The age of the, of the Daimyo. Oh. The daima, the daimi, or whatever. Yeah. Again, Japanese is not my best language. <laughs> I do much better with Spanish for some reason. <laughs> it's interesting, long, and again, we're talking about a show that needs subtitles, even for the historians, because they have a couple of Japanese speakers, and you just, the moment you hear it, and you see the black and white, and you just go, oh, hang on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but the one thing I do find more interesting about this is they actually made the historian, uh, shot, they rendered his- the historian's footage of them just, you know, it's a face and it's talking, looking at a screen. Um, they rendered it in black and white while in the other t- series, uh, Rise of Empires, the Ottomans and Roman Empires, they weren't. Right. Yeah. 
That's an interesting style. And they had choice. more um, interesting locales, like one would be sitting in a cathedral or, you know, one of the Muslim temples and that sort of thing. And it just... I don't know. This one feels a little bit more boring with the historians, while the other ones felt more engaging. Mm. While um, the reenactment is definitely what you come for. Stay for the uh, s- stay for the uh, maybe three thousand dollar gore effects budget with someone <laughs> pulling sausages out for guts. <laughs> Gosh, the De- decapitations and clearly what looks to be a digitally enhanced head that's being given to um, one of the Oda clan because that was a thing. Bring the heads of your enemies to your lord and do them up with makeup and all that. Yeah. Gosh. (laughs) 15th century, brutal stuff. (laughs) So, yeah, what makes this um, series stand out for you? Uh, I've always been fascinated with the uh, Civil War period of Japan with the Age of the Samurai where they sort of evolved from the servants of lords and emperors to... Well, what we see them now, the Knights of Japan, mm. the um, the mounted men, the, the mysterious warriors that live by the Bushido Code. Oh, right, yes. And really just seeing how they've evolved and how Oda Nobunaga changed the face of Japanese warfare by uplifting the peasants, even going so far as to promoting one to being one of his favorite generals, and how... He used stealth combat and was one of the few warlords to actually not have an aversion to firearms. Oh, right, yes. Because at that time. Yeah, Portuguese ship crashed on Japan and, like, anything that happens in Japan that's interesting, it's always by accident. (laughs) God. (laughs) True. Um. So you've got... And just how he sort of revolutionized Japanese warfare, just watching... Odo Nobunaga just see, changed the face of warfare as the Japanese knew it, even going so far as to saying, right, the arquebuses take too long to reload. You're going to fire three shots, and then the archers are going to ca- cover you. And if they get too close, you've got spear and pikemen nearby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is stuff that we do now. Not with the spears and pikes, but while someone else is reloading, we cover them. Yeah. So what's this series called again? E- the Age of Samurai. Age of Samurai Battle for Japan. Right. It is a six episode series, one season, and each episode is about nearly an hour long. So pretty good um, drama series, um, documentary series, sorry. I'm just looking up the uh, the cast now. Yes. If there is, an in, if there is a... A uh, little golden nugget of someone that we might recognize. Oh, yeah. Well... Uh, I, I'm more inquiring because I didn't see anyone I recognised. <laughs> well, you know. We that's... must have just gone in Kyoto and said, we're looking for all um, samurai enthusiasts and Japanese actors who want to take part in this. No one notable. I was kind of wondering if there'd be like someone, you know, slipped in there and that would sort of add a level of prestige. But no, not to, not. Say, not to say, you know, nobody's like, you know. It, this may have made <laughs> someone's career for all yeah. we know. Which sounds interesting. It is interesting. Um, Roman Empire is just as interesting, you know. That one does have Sean Bean in it. Oh, yeah, well, that's a big name I think right he's there. the narrator. Oh, yes, of course, that would be. Um, he's done quite a few things. He did um, a, a Waterloo, you know, Napoleonic Wars thing, because yeah. obviously he did Sharp, you know, through, through the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually a bit of on the rise. Um, that's three seasons, each for... Each episode, each season focusing on a different notable ruler. First season is Caligula, second season is Julius Caesar, and then finally Commodus. Ah, yes. All the big ones. All the big ones. And you probably <laughs> sit there and watch Commodus and go, hang on a second, Gladiator lied to me! <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Rise of Ottomans, which is seeing how the Ottoman Empire solidified its rule over modern-day Turkey, going so far as to... The crushing of Constantinople, as it's now known as Istanbul. Istanbul, not Constantinople. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, final thoughts? Final thoughts are uh, Narcos and Narcos Mexico. Go and watch. They are fantastic. I am surprised it's taken me this long to watch. Mm. Age of Samurai, Battle for Japan. 
give it a watch. If you're, if, if you're a history buff, if and you're if you a history have buff, an interest in Japan definitely sounds like a must watch. It is. I would put that on there. I did have my little love affair with Japan, but it <laughs> shifted more uh, back to the West. Ah, yes. <laughs> I, I'm now done with the East. I'm firmly looking at the West and going, oh, crap, this is... Wow. And if you do love Breaking Bad, if you love the Sicario movies, definitely check out Narcos, if you haven't already. If I mean, haven't. I haven't yet, but, you know, we'll get to it one day. Oh, anyway, definitely. that's today's episode of the Geeks Review. I'm Royce. And I'm Joshua. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.